pride. And that we are Americans. You may say that we're not, but we are Americans. We love this country. We would bleed for this country. This isn't the country that saw us be born, but this is the country that took care of us. This is our adopted mother who saw us when we were sick, when we were healthy, when we were down in the dumps. This is the country that was there. This country is, is the best. Not because of we have more military power or because we have weapons or any of that. We are the best because we're a melting pot of everybody. We're not just one strictly one group of people. America is the world. It holds everyone, every race, every credo, every culture is here in America. And that's what makes us the greatest. I'm 19 years old and I'm a recent graduate from James Hubert Blake High School. I came to the United States with my mother to see my father. My father had left the family earlier, a couple months ahead of us, to come and get a job and send money to us. That was the whole plan. I was only two years old at the time and uh, I was so excited. I was so excited to see my father. He was my superhero. He was the biggest, the tallest guy in the world to me. And America, when I thought of America, I thought of my dad. I, my mom told me, Michael, we're going to America. And I was like, okay. But then she told me, your dad's there. And I was like, let's go to America. Let's go, Why, what are we doing here? We went through the procedure. We got our visas and everything. And uh, we, it finally came a day. And I remember it so vividly. We, we, I got dressed up and I got on, I got on that plane with my mother. I, we arrived in Miami. My father was there waiting for us. And as soon as I saw him, I, I ran with all my strength. And I ran into his arms. There was everything else melted away. It was a hallmark moment. I remember it. And I just hugged him so long and for so long on our way home. And uh, I was looking around the car, and I realized that this, this was a new world. This wasn't Panama anymore, this was America. In Miami, September 2nd, 1996. The fire inside, my ambition began. I learned English within three months. I knew from, from early on how everything worked. Whenever my parents couldn't pay the rent on time because there was only so much you could do being an illegal immigrant and with very little or limited education, uh, there's very little that you could do outside manual labor or cleaning. They completely went to a new place where they didn't understand the culture, they didn't understand the language, they didn't know anything, but they did it. The greatest problem with undocumented immigrants is the fear and frustration and um, inability for them to realize any kind of hopes or dreams. And what happens oftentimes is they will live in their communities and they won't even try because there's nothing available. I would see the anger and the shame that my parents would have to endure. And it would break me apart and I would, I would go home and I would, I would see what I had to do. I, I would go to my room 
and I would just sit there and tell myself, I have to do better. I have to, I have to help my parents so that they don't have to go through this. My father, he was a construction worker, my mother cleaned. And they had these great bosses. So they were actually husband and wife. And they treated my family very well. Immigrants face countless struggles. If you could just imagine coming to this country by yourself and you don't know anyone, you don't speak the language, you don't, have, you don't even have permission to be here, pretty much everything can go wrong. But, you know, a lot of the immigrants, they come, they try to stay optimistic, but to get more detail, they, they face lots of issues. Hard time finding a job. Um, since they don't have papers, uh, documentation, it's difficult for them to be able to acquire a job. Even And sometimes if they do get a job, it's difficult. Sometimes they, they tend to run into problems with the employer. Also, not having um, any type of family here, they're here by themselves, they, you know, that can cause stress. On June 15th, I awoke to check Yahoo News, and uh, it's, it was basically my, my, my newspaper. So I was reading, and it said, Obama administration stopping deportations. And I had, I had seen hundreds of these articles before. So I was like, this is nothing new, but you know, let me read it. Just, just okay, just, let's see what's going on. And as I read, I started realizing that the article was aiming more towards me. And the more I read, the more I realized this wasn't just another stopping deportations, but this was something completely new. And that it would, it would give me the chance that I was hoping for. I turn on my TV and at exactly one, I look for the channel, I go on CNN, and I, I see the President of the United States of America walk out and speak the words that I had been hoping for for so long, ever since I was a child. The deferred action. The day it occurred was one of the top three best days of my life. I think, as the deferred action shows, if something does become available, even that little glimmer of hope is enough. Uh, and I've had clients come into to my office on the deferred action. When I've told them it doesn't really give you much, they say it doesn't. But it's better than the nothing that we currently have. And we have no ID. My, my child can't go to college. He's a top student. He's not able to uh, get in because he has no real ID. Um, it's difficult for them to, to even function normally in life. Towards the end of my senior year, I, I reality sank in in that I would not be able to join the military or go to a regular university because of my legal status, because they don't accept people who are legal and um, they don't give help, financial aid, to anybody in that situation. When my son told me of what was going on, I was just stunned in the fact that this was happening, that some positive was occurring, and that these kids were going to finally be able to start their lives. It's something very great when somebody puts themselves in a situation of people who are going through tough times and understand what the people with good hearts are trying to accomplish. It would allow me to work, get a driver's license. It, would still, it wouldn't achieve everything, but it would allow me to step into the light and be part in some way of this country and allow my, my life to get started because up until that point, everything was very limited. This day was incredible. Undocumented immigrants have been 
marginalized in this country and often have very few options left to them. In the past year, we have deported over 400,000 uh, such people by ICE. Over 250,000 of those people are Mexicans. This leaves a large uh, portion of, of families fragmented. It means that there are U.S. children. Imagine that you're an 11-year-old or five-year-old and suddenly your mother who goes to report to ICE doesn't come home and is deported. And your father who is a U.S. citizen is then faced with trying to figure out how to raise these children and how to maintain a job and how to help with their education and everything else that this involves. Some of these children, approximately 5,000 of these children, are currently under foster care and guardianships and forced adoptions because um, the parents have been um, unable to take care of them because they have been deported. Three years ago, both of my parents were deported and I found myself lost. I found myself depressed. But then I continued working hard, you know, because I believe in hard work. I believe in education. I graduated my high school in the top 5% of my class. Woo! I graduated with a 4.4 GPA and got accepted into college, but that wasn't enough. I was gonna be deported. But I had a great community. I had my friends, my church, my family, the media, groups like Casa de Maryland, who basically took the image of, the stereotypical image of the illegal immigrant, which is someone who doesn't speak English, who comes to this country smuggling drugs, smuggling people. But obviously that's not who we are. So my community and the media took this stereotypical image and shattered it to show that this is an American kid who's been here his whole life. And ever since then, I wanted to give back to that community. I wanted to give back to you guys. My friend had told me that, hey, June 15th, go to Casa de Maryland. And I had told him, Casa de Maryland? What is that? He's like, oh, it's this place that helps the Spanish community. Casa helps immigrants with every issue imaginable. They help them with job placement. They help them acquire new skills so they can get new jobs. They help them with teaching them English. They help them with computer classes. Sometimes even immigrants aren't even able to uh, read or write their own language, the Spanish language, so they teach them how to do that. Casa de Maryland has seven levels of ESOL classes to help them learn English. And there's, we also do organizing, community organizing where we try to bring the community together so they can help us fight for their rights. In November 6th, all of us who can vote, uh, we are going to vote for question four, for the Dream Act. In addition to pass the Dream Act, we are going to pass comprehensive immigration reform. It is for me truly an honor and a privilege to have been invited here today as the first Latino president of a University of Maryland campus. We already have invested on you, on your elementary education, your secondary education. We need your drive, your ambitions, your dreams. We need them to help build and assist in making a better America, in building our future. In many cases, this is the only country you really have known. I came to the country when I was a year old. I've lived there ever since. I associated with this culture. But I've always feared that same thing we all fear, right? Which is, what happens one day if our parents get caught at this traffic light? June 15th, I went to Casa de Maryland. And that day opened my eyes of just how many of us there were so many and I just felt so baffled that all of us were there that there were so many others just like me this whole time all these years I knew that there were adults that were in my situation but I had never really thought there were kids just like me up until that day it felt like a scene from from the exodus 
or a mass migration of people just there. At CASA, we serve immigrants from all countries, Central America, South America, the Caribbean, Africa, even Asia and India. My name is Cindy Collade. I'm from Ivory Coast. Um, my, my mother was working with CASA, so after that she got me involved in it, and since then I've been working with them. I'm also volunteering today because I want to help make sure that everybody get the chance to be able to apply for the different action. I will also be part of the different action law. Those who apply basically. It's a fair share to everybody that lives in the country and that pay taxes for this country. There are many different ways that immigrants do pay taxes even if they aren't paying at the end of the year. Uh, an amount owed. They are able to pay taxes through a, a tax ID number. They register for one and um, they're able to pay taxes that way. They do that so that they comply with you know, the U.S. laws and so they could prove that, hey, I'm a good person, I want to pay taxes, I'm here without documents, I still want to respect this country by paying my taxes. They certainly pay um, car taxes, they pay sales taxes, they pay um, FICA taxes, uh, they have t t uh, social security taxes. They have all kinds of taxes taken off their paychecks. The idea that immigrants take jobs from Americans is very inaccurate. It's almost a myth, I would say, because usually, especially in the state of Maryland, the Latino population and the immigrant population, they tend to create their own businesses. So a lot of times they, they're self-sustaining and they have em employees who are from our immigrants as well. They actually help the economy out. Maryland has done a study uh, and it shows that the immigrant population is, is growing very quickly and rapidly and that most of the small businesses created in the last five years have been created in fact by first generation immigrants. They don't take jobs away from other people because I think the problem is that there aren't in jobs there and therefore jobs have to be created. If we were to take away the, all the unauthorized immigrants from the state of Maryland, the economy would lose about 15 billion dollars in activity, in wages, in salaries and things like that. So no, it's, it's not true that they take away jobs. This shows that the job and the economy would greatly benefit from these type of entrepreneurial spirited people who will increase not only our, our per capita gross income but also will help create more jobs for other people who are unemployed so that our employment rate can go down. They also often at the lower end take jobs such as construction work or farming or seasonal work or housekeeping jobs that other people may not want to take or may not uh, or maybe a shortage such as nursing profession often has a shortage so there's a large amount of, of immigrants who have taken those kind of jobs. Those people are usually legal at that point but taking jobs away I think that that, that's not the case. In most immigrants, if you look at them, it's not easy to leave everything you know and love behind. It's not easy. But they do it because America, it's the land where you go out there, you can become something. You can go from being the poorest of the poor, but if you have a strong will, in a sharp mind, you could become a pioneer of industry.